Welcome to NPTEL online course on machine learning and deep learning fundamentals and applications. In my last class, I explained the concept of ensemble classifiers. I highlighted three important principles. The first, I explained the concept of stacking. After this, I explained the concept of begging. And finally, I explained the concept of boosting. In case of the boosting, the principle is from number of weak learners, I can make a strong classifier. The samples which are not correctly classified are given maximum importance. So that means I can give the importance to the samples which are not correctly classified. And that is the fundamental concept of the boosting. And one important algorithm is Adabus classifier. Today I am going to discuss the concept of uh, boosting and also I will explain the concept of Adabus classifier. So let us begin this class. So in my last class, I have shown this uh, figure and this is regarding boosting. So this is the boosting. So here you can see I am considering a training data set and with the help of this training data set, I am training the model, the model number one. The model number one cannot perfectly classify all the samples. The samples which are misclassified that we are considering and I am giving the importance to the samples which are misclassified by the model number one. So that is why we are considering weighted sample one. That means I am considering another training data set considering weighted samples. And based on this weighted samples, I am training the model number 2 that is the another classifier. And model number 2 also it cannot perfectly classify all the samples. So that is why I have to give the importance to the samples which are not correctly classified by the model number 2. So that means weighted sample 2. So I have another training data set considering the weighted sample 2. And with the help of this new training data set. I am training the model 3. So like this I can consider number of weak learners. So here this model number 1, model number 2, model number 3, these I can consider as weak classifiers. So these are weak classifiers, the model number 1, model number 2, these are weak classifiers. And finally the output from model 1, model 2, model 3 from all the models and they are combined and uh, after combination I am getting the output. So that means uh, this is the strong classifier so this is the fundamental concept of boosting that means from number of weak learners I am making a strong classifier and you can understand the concept of the weighted samples. The samples which are not correctly classified, I am giving the importance and they are weighted. So this is the fundamental concept of the boosting. So let us uh, write the algorithm for the boosting. So move to the next slide. So what is this boosting? So first step is number 1 train a weak model on some training data so first we are considering a weak model on some training data. After this, I am computing error. So that means compute the error of the model on each training samples.
on each training example. After this, give higher importance to the examples on which the model mistakes. So that means I am giving the importance to the examples which are not correctly classified by the model. After this, what I can do? Retrain the model using importance weighted training examples. And after this, go back to step 2. So, step 2 is this. So, this is the algorithm uh, for boosting. So, this is the fundamental algorithm for boosting. Now, let us discuss the concept of another algorithm related to the boosting and that is the AdaBoost classifier. So, AdaBoost is a boosting technique and with the help of this AdaBoost classifier, we can uh, do perfect classification. So, let us discuss the concept of the AdaBoost algorithm. So, now I am discussing AdaBoost. This is a boosting algorithm. algorithm. So, first suppose I have some training samples given training data So, suppose I have the training data x1, y1, so n number of training data xn that is the input and output is yn. With this yn output may be minus 1 or plus 1 for all n for all n. So, output may be minus 1 or plus 1. So, the given training data set and you can see I have the training data set x1, y1, x2, y2 like this and uh, output is yn and it may be minus 1 or plus 1. After this in the second step, initialize with of each example so the example is x n y n and i am initializing the widths that is I am considering equal widths. So, I am initializing the widths and I am considering equal widths. So, it is 1 by n for all n. So, initialization of the widths for 
is example. After this, we start iteration. So, for round t is equal to 1 to t. So, we are starting the iteration. Learn a weak classifier. So, suppose the weak classifier is ht x and output already I told you it is it may be minus 1 or plus 1 using training data weighted as per weighted as per dt. So, now we are considering the learning of a weak classifier using the training data weighted as per dt. After this, uh, we have to determine the error because already I told you uh, that all the samples may not be correctly classified. So, that is why we have to determine the error. So, compute the weighted fraction of errors of the weak classifier weak classifier is the HT on this training data. So, we are computing the error. So, what is the error? The error I can write epsilon t is equal to summation. So, n is equal to 1 to n because we are considering n number of samples. So, this is the dt is the training data set and the error actually corresponds to the case when the samples are not correctly classified. So, that means ht x n which are not correctly classified that is not equal to y n. So, only for this case we are determining the error. So, error is nothing but summation from n is equal to 1 to n d t n and we are considering the error for the samples which are not correctly classified that is h t x n is not equal to y n. So, that means we have computed the error. After computation of the error what I need to do? So, move to the next slide. Next point is we have to set importance set importance of h i. So, how to set the importance? Because the samples which are misclassified we have to give the weightage maximum weightage the importance. So, this alpha t is equal to 1 by 2 we are considering log 1 minus error, error already I have shown E t epsilon t, epsilon t this is the error. So, we are considering the set the importance like this. So, this is the importance. So, this value actually gets larger as the error gets smaller. So, we are setting the importance. So, after this I have to update the weight of each of the samples. So, how to update the weights of the samples? So, update 
the width of each sample because already I told you the samples which are not correctly classified I have to give the importance. So, in the next iteration I am getting dt plus 1 and how to give the importance to the misclassified samples. So, dt that is the in the previous iteration that is multiplied with exponential function minus alpha t if h t x n if h t x n is equal to y n. So, that means the samples which are correctly classified uh, I have to decrease the weight. So, this actually the meaning is corresponding to this and this is actually the correct prediction correct prediction. So, since it is a correct prediction what I need to do decrease weight now I let us consider the samples which are not correctly classified by the weak classifier. So, for this what we can write the samples in the previous iteration and it is multiplied by exponential alpha t if h t x n is not correctly classified. So, I am giving the importance. So, what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is incorrect prediction and corresponding to this what I am doing now increasing the weight So, that is the fundamental principle of the Ada boost filter. So, these two conditions I can combine like this d t n exponential minus alpha t y n h t x n. So, I can write like this d t. So, d t plus 1 I can determine like this that is the the training data set in the next iteration. So, I am getting this one and also I have to do normalization. So, how to do the normalization? Normalize d t minus 1 this t plus 1 so that it sums to 1. So, that means d t plus 1 I can write like this d t plus 1 is nothing but d t plus 1 n and just I am considering the normalization. So, m is equal to 1 to n d t plus 1 m. So, just I am doing the normalization. So, after the normalization uh, I have to consider the output because I have to combine all the outputs of the weak learners to get the strong classifier. So, what is the output? output is nothing but 
I can consider H X signum function we are considering S I G N signum function summation T is equal to 1 to T alpha T H T X so this is the final output I am getting so signal function is considered and that means I am combining all the weak classifiers to get the strong classifier and that is actually the boosted so this is actually the boosted output so this is the boosted output so I am getting the output like this so this is the fundamental concept of the Adaboost algorithm now uh, let us consider one illustration or I can consider one example of the Adaboost uh, classifier so move to the next slide so in this case we are considering a binary classification problem uh, having 10 training examples so this is the training data set and suppose the data set is D1 so initial weight distribution initial weight distribution I can consider like this 1 by 10 because we have 10 training examples and if I consider the initial weight as 1 by 10 that means each point has equal weight and we are considering the weak classifiers uh, we are considering weak classifiers for this problem for this classification problem and what weak classifier we are considering this x is parallel linear classifier we can consider linear classifier so you can see here we are considering 10 training examples 10 and what I am considering first we are considering initial weight distribution so it is 1 by 10 so each point has equal weight that is equal to 1 by 10 and we are considering axis parallel linear classifiers that is the weak classifiers so next we are considering suppose round 1 that is the after round 1 so we are considering the classifier suppose classifier is H1 and this is a linear classifier so if I consider this classifier you can see some of the samples are misclassified so like this this sample this sample and these samples these are misclassified so uh, what what is the principle of the adabus filter I have to give the importance to the misclassified samples so I have to give importance to the misclassified samples so based on this I am getting the second data set that is D2 so in this case suppose the error rate of the classifier H1 is suppose epsilon E1 epsilon 1 is equal to 0.3 so the weight of H1 so that is alpha 1 that is 1 by 2 ln 1 minus epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 1 and that is equal to 0 0.42 so each misclassified point up weighted that is the weight is multiplied by exponential alpha 1 so I can write is 
misclassified point up weighted so how to do the up weighted this weight is multiplied by that means how to do the up weight the weight is multiplied by weight is multiplied by exponential alpha 1 so weight is multiplied by exponential alpha 1 and similarly for the correctly classified samples correctly classified points classified point down weighted down weighted so how to do the down weight the weight is multiplied by exponential minus alpha 1 so you can see I am giving importance to the misclassified sample because the weight is multiplied by exponential alpha 1 and for the correctly classified samples what we are doing uh, we are down weighted that means weight is multiplied by exponential minus alpha 1 and after this I am getting the new data set the new data set is D2 so this is after round 1 after this I move to the round number 2 so this is after round 2 so in the round number 2 we are considering another weak classifier that is a linear classifier that is H2 previously we considered H1 now we are considering H2 so in this case also you can see I have some misclassified samples so what are the misclassified samples so this sample this sample and also this sample these are misclassified so I have to give the importance to these misclassified samples so here you can see I am giving the importance to these samples I am giving the importance to these samples I am giving the importance to these samples so in this case also I can determine error rate so error rate of H2 epsilon 2 is equal to 0 0.21 and we have to determine the weight weight of H2 that is alpha 2 is equal to 1 by 2 ln 1 minus epsilon 2 divided by epsilon 2 and that is equal to 0 0.65 and after this each misclassified point I have to give the importance so I can write is misclassified point up weighted that is the weight is multiplied by exponential alpha 2 this is for the misclassified samples and is correctly classified points correctly classified points down weighted so how to do the down weight this weight is simply multiplied by exponential minus alpha 2 so 
this is the concept. So, this is about the round 2. So, after round 2 I am getting this one. So, move to the round number 3 in the next slide. So, after round 3. So, you can see first we considered H1, after this we considered H2, now we are considering this one H3. These are all weak classifiers and corresponding to H3 also you can see there are some misclassifications. So, this is this is the misclassification. And in this case also we can determine the error rate. So, error rate of H3 is equal to 0 0.14 and weight because we have 10 number of samples from this we can determine the error rate. So, how many samples are misclassified? based on this we can determine the error rate. So, weight of H 3 now I can determine the so, weight of H 3 is alpha 3. So, it is 1 by 2 L n 1 minus epsilon 3 divided by epsilon 3 that is equal to 0 0.92. So, after this suppose I want to stop. So, our ensemble uh, consists of 3 classifiers. So, finally, I have the 3 classifiers and these are H1, H2 and H3. So, that is the ensemble classifier. So, finally, I have 3 classifiers and this is the ensemble one. So, we are combining this 3. So, what will be the final classifier? So, let us move to the next sl slide. So, this is the final classifier. Because we have to combine all these 3 classifiers. So, how to combine? The combination formula already I have explained. So, I have shown uh, the combination formula. The combination formula if you see in my previous slide it is nothing but H x. We are considering the signum function summation t is equal to 1 to t alpha t h t x. So, we consider this formula for final output. So, the final classifier is a weighted linear combination of all the classifiers. So, we are considering 3 classifiers. So, the final classifier is a weighted linear combination of all these 3 classifiers. So, classifier H1 gets a weight of alpha i. So, what is my H final? H final is is equal to signum so we have to combine all this classifier so it is 0 0.42 plus 0 0.65 plus 0 0.92. So, we are combining all these classifiers, 3 classifiers. One is H1, another one is H2 and this is H3. So, we are combining with the help of the signum function. So, that means the final classifier is a linear uh, combination of all the classifiers. So, earlier we computed alpha 1. If you see my previous slide, alpha 1 I computed like this it is 0 0.42 alpha 2 the value was 0 
and alpha 3 I computed like this 0 0.92. So that means after combination I am getting this output. So this is the final classifier. So this is the final strong classifier. So H1, H2 and H3 these are combined and finally I am getting this classifier the final classifier I am getting. So multiple weak linear classifiers are combined to get a strong non-linear classifier. So here you can see uh, I am getting a non-linear classifier and H1, H2 and H3 all these are linear classifiers. So multiple I can write the multiple multiple weak linear classifiers are combined classifiers are combined to get a strong nonlinear classifier so this is the concept of the ada boost filter so if i want to compare these two principles one is the bagging and another one is the boosting so i can say bagging versus boosting So first point is uh, uh, actually they are data dependent. So who is the winner? I don't know, but it depends on data. The first point is the computational complexity. So begging is computationally more efficient than boosting. So that means the begging is better than boosting if I consider this point the computational complexity. Second is the both the techniques can reduce the variance. So both can reduce variance. Variance means overfitting by combining different models. So the resulting model has higher stability as compared to the individual ones. So this is the comparison. Another important point is, so begging actually cannot reduce the bias. So I can write begging usually cannot reduce the bias. But the boosting can, boosting can. And the begging usually performs better than boosting if we do not have high bias, if I want to reduce only the variance, then I think the begging is better. So I can write the begging performs better than boosting. if we do not have high bias, if we do not have a high bias and I want to only reduce the variance and only want to reduce variance. So these are the comparisons between bagging and the boosting. 
in this class i explain the concept of boosting and also i explain the concept of ada boost classifier in case of the boosting i can combine number of weak classifiers to get a strong classifier and that is the fundamental concept of the ada boost classifier i can give the importance to the samples which are not correctly classified by the weak classifiers so i can combine all the weak classifiers to get a strong classifier so this is about the ada boost or the boosting principle if i want to compare the bagging and the boosting the both can reduce variance that means the overfitting problem can be reduced with the help of boosting and the bagging and if i want to compare the computational complexity boosting is more computationally complex than bagging and if i want to reduce bias then bagging is not a good principle i have to consider boosting so that is the distinction between bagging and the boosting so let us stop here today thank you